I was going to die that day. I mean, what do we say? Um, this is my second chance God gave me. And I'm going to use it every day to do as much positive, <laughs> to leave a better legacy than I would have left it before. That's what this is about. Wow. And I've dedicated everything I can to do this. I, don't, I do it selflessly. I don't, I don't try to put my name on anything I do, like on the projects that I have. I, I, I went through extra measures to make sure I have, like I have higher permissions on a lot of stuff, but people don't, you know, people won't know that. You know, I don't, I don't want the praise. I don't want the attention. I'm not doing it for that. I'm just doing it to help people. Intrinsic, like. Yeah, I, I, this helps me with me. Yeah. It's, I think I can kind of relate to that in a way because all the work that I do trying to, you know, teach people about like anti-racism and, you know, all this stuff, people thank me and I am embarrassed because it's selfish. I'm doing it for me. I can't stand living in a society that exists a bullshit and lie. We live a lie and everyone just go all the way, go, go about it, you know? So it's for me. So when they thank me, I feel like, well, I'm actually kind of selfish because I can't take it. That's why I do it, you know? But yeah. so I kind of get, like, can I ask you questions that are like hard questions? And yes, you, you, can, me you can cut me off and say, yeah, I don't go there or whatever. I'm, I'm, really, I'm blunt. I'm, you wouldn't believe That's okay. So when you were little, like, did you, were you like super, super racist or like what? Like, no. Like, no. So how did you get in a group like that then? Like, I don't get it. I didn't join because of racism. The Aryan Brotherhood, majority of the time, is not racist, actually. Racism is on the ass end of that. Oh, First and foremost, the Aryan Brotherhood is a criminal syndicate. I didn't know that. Oh. Yes. I got it. it like, they have racist regalia, like, stuff like that. Oh, okay. You know, that um, that is used to just intimidate, piss people off. So like, I'm covering. That's their number one objective, though. Like, that's not their number one. No. Oh, okay. Money, drugs, murder. That's the main things. Like Everything media, else falls pretty much after that. The media makes it like it's basically. The media loves a good story. I, I know, and, and I it's it's so hard, especially now. Just imagine that the mafia would have married a street gang, and then had nothing to lose, and no fear of the government. That's the Aryan Brotherhood. Are people in it racist and stuff, or not really? Like, yeah, yeah. There's some of them. Yeah, yeah. They're there. Yeah. Especially out west in California, it's more predominant. In the in the California system, it's really racial. In the federal system, now these are all independent. Now understand that all the states work independently of each other, and the federal system works independently of that. It's not together. Okay. Um. So yeah. So Texas and Mississippi, not so much. It's racial. Like there's racial regalia all the way through it, and there's racial talk all the way through it because it helps. I'm going to say conditioning is what we used to call it, but it's just brainwashing. When I'm training somebody, I'm conditioning them to become, you know, from, you know, prospect to a member. I am breaking them down. I'm rebuilding. I'm brainwashing them. And I'm pumping this rhetoric into them and all day, all night, all day, all night uh, for up to a year before they can get the chance to go after somebody and get their patch. Get their patch, you say? Yeah. Um, there, every member has a brand. A tattoo and they have other tattoos that designate other things my tattoos are like right there oh, okay oh okay it's like a coat of arms and oh okay there yep i got it and those are because i hurt people you get that for medals yeah and rank Oh, I, I was one of the highest ranking people, so I got all their stuff. Yeah. I collected them all. What do you tell people um, when you try to, when you're trying to get them kind of like initiated into this? What do you, like, what kind of stuff would you tell them? I mean, are you allowed to say, or I mean, like, depends on, what do you depends on the person. To get them to feel and think and. Depends on the person. On the if person. they approached us, they already have an idea. Oh, okay. So yeah. this is a very personal, this isn't like a, like something. No. It's a very personal. The Aryan Brotherhood does not recruit like the Simon City Royals, the gangsters, the Latin Kings, anybody else does not recruit like that. 90% of the prospects for the Aryan Brotherhood never make it. You want people who are absolutely dedicated and. Exactly. Elite and to feel elite. This is an elite club. 
Okay, I got it. That's why the, that, you know, that's why you know that's why membership is so desirable. People are willing to kill for it, and they usually literally, have to. Literally, 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 yeah. yeah, literally have to kill for it. Yeah, this is a designation. All this stuff right here, like I want it off now because I'm ashamed of it. But right. I fought hard for it. I, I I've done oh. unspeakable, ungodly things for it. Um, not proud of any of that. No, but it was a part of your life, and it was. It was. And, or, I never thought I was getting out of prison. Honestly, I never thought I was going to get out. I acted accordingly. Okay. I had eight years at the age of 19. You know, my frontal lobe wasn't even fully developed yet. So I had no concept of what eight years could do. So that was forever for me. So I acted like it was forever. And as you see, <laughs> Did you- I also became a tattoo artist and all that too. So that kind of helped. <laughs> yeah. oh, are you artistic? Like, are you kind of good? Or- oh, yes. Oh, I'll, oh, yeah, I can show you pictures of what I used to tattoo. Yeah, I can't anymore. I'm like I said, I'm legally blind. Yeah, see too well. But um, I I loved tattooing. I when, when I got shot, I was in the middle of trying to open up a shop. I lost everything when I got shot. I lost everything I owned. I came to where I'm at now with uh, two pairs of basketball shorts and a t-shirt I had in the hospital. Started That's it. From talk about starting from scratch. My God. Yeah, it's like the fourth time in my life. It's getting you're old. Like, <laughs> you're like okay. getting old. Yeah, and you're so young. Um, you look young. You you don't look. Yeah, young. I'm about to be 36. Actually, my wife just reminded me. I was wow. about to. Like, I thought I was about to be 35. But I'm about to be 36, and I was like, wow, that's the age my mom was when she passed. So. You've lived a thousand lives. Right. Uh, wisdom. I have a lot of. I have a lot of wisdom on it. I've been through a lot of stuff. I'm guessing you have a lot of wisdom where you die. I mean, you you can't. Yes. <laughs> you got to take what you take it and learn and grow and you chose to do that and you try to get out and is that when everything bad I mean is that when bad stuff started happening or was it just more like an incident when you decided you every wanted- time I tried to leave Mississippi excuse my language shit was shit would go sideways every time like if you're spiritual I'd say it's the devil pulling me back in every single time I, I every, time, every time I tried something awful catastrophic would take all my money and or, or just <laughs> For a year, year and a half, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, safely a year before I got shot. I tried to get out of the lifestyle. Try to get out of the lifestyle. What eventually caused me to get shot was that um, I was wanted out. I didn't want to put my my drug connection hooked up to prison. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to end it. I wanted it out of the drug scene. I wanted it out of the life. I wanted it out of everything. They said I could retire after 15 years. That wasn't true. It was a lie. Yeah. So um, they wanted you for life. Yeah, I knew too much. I ran the outside of the prison. Like, tell me about that. Everybody, when they left prison, had to report to me in the state. Is this a prison-based thing, or it just was where you... They were formed in 1967 in San Quentin Penitentiary. Um, they first started as the Diamond Tooth Gang and the Bluebird Gang, which, uh, which then evolved into um, the Aryan Brotherhood, which then transferred to Texas, and then... By 1983, it had transferred to Mississippi. Did you, if you're in prison, do you have to be in it if you're white or if you're whatever? Or do you, like, if you're not in it, are people going to basically kill you or are you kind of on your own? Depends. If you're somebody that is dishonest, likes to lie, steal, you ain't going to last long. Well, you ain't going to last long if you're like that, you know, affiliated either, but you'll last a little bit longer. Um, Really, if you're cool in there and you don't like start no shit and you can pretty much fight, you're okay. Like, just don't go looking for shit, you know, and it's okay. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't affiliated most of my time. And when like, and you, and you don't join the Aaron Brotherhood for protection. You don't like, you don't do that. Right. That's how the, you know, the vid- videos on TV shows put it. You have to join for protection. That's, I mean, there's so many stereotypes and there's so many mis- Yeah. Mis- well, yeah. TV, okay. Yeah, I'm not that one. Yeah, and that that's really insulting to me, mm-hmm. honestly. When like when that's when that's the first thing I hear. Oh, you must join for protection. Like honestly, it it brings bad bad reaction out of me because <laughs> it insults me. Because you know, it's like insult, um, Tom says it. No, 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 but not from you. Yeah, but just I'm just you, talking yeah. about yeah in general. Like because some people like will lead with that and go, oh, I understand you had to join for protection, and I'm like. <laughs> 
you didn't even let me finish. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, no, actually, I didn't join for protection. I was actually in there two years before, um, and I had actually was part of another organization. Gotten out, was part of nothing, and but see, I am a, I'm an alpha male, very strong um, personality, uh, leader personality. I don't, um, I'm a trendsetter, not a trend follower type kind of guy. Prison formed me from an introvert to an extrovert, and at when I joined the Aryan Brotherhood, I was. I'm going to say this, and I've never actually said this you know, to a a journalist or anybody else, but um, for a while, I was pretending to be this person. Before I knew it, I became that person. And when I realized it, I broke down and cried. Why did you cry? Because I realized... That the person that I had, you know, once been was gone. Mm -hmm. That prison and the state of Mississippi had fully destroyed everything of who I once was. Mm -hmm. Everything. Sometimes in life, humans are more fragile than we think. And sometimes there is no going back. And that's a very hard revelation to take. Man, it's especially when you have no control of your life. I mean, nope. and I was 19. You're a kid. Yeah. You're a kid. I just turned 19, got locked up. And I, I robbed a store, yes. I knew I wouldn't get caught. But I did not know that armed robbery in Mississippi carried a life sentence. I just wanted to get off the streets. You know, I didn't know how to live any other way but robbing. Mm-hmm selling drugs I, I didn't know like my mom didn't teach me how to do that she taught me how to use digital scales she taught me how to do a lot of other things i shouldn't have done but like not all the good stuff she so taught you like how to keep a healthy lifestyle kind of like is that what you mean like how to she taught me how to shoplift okay she taught me how to hotwire cars she taught me hot how to cars. cut dope you, say it again taught you to what the last one she taught me how to cut dope and sell it. Okay. So she, so not your typical mother. Let's you know, say not, no, your, no. not your typical uh, TV, TV uh, mother. My mom was a, was a biker lady. Um, she was also a bounty hunter one time. She body slammed a 350 pound dude on TV when they aired her. Um, tough woman. A tough lady. Not to be messed with. Um, when she was bounty hunting, you know, you know, you know, you know, for sec- you know security, she carried a three fifty seven with a suicide hammer. Um, yeah, tough, uh, tough lady. Thomas. She used to run with the uh, um, when she lived in Barstow, California. She ran with the Hell's Angels when she moved down here in the South. She ran with the Banditos. <laughs> so um, I was raised around bikers, truckers, and everything else. My family's truckers. Did you stand a chance to be mainstream ever? I mean, like. With, what is mainstream? Like, um, I guess like what I mean is, and I don't mean this as an insult, but did, no, go ahead. When you're that little, and that's what people do. You do. You don't really know what everyone else is do. like. Uh-huh. Like I taught in Compton, California, for for a couple of years, and my kids. This was a long time ago during the LA riots. Yeah. My, my kids had never seen a white person uh-huh. before, like this. They had never been. They had seen them on TV, maybe walking by, but oh my god, they were like putting their hands on my head. They were like, wow, this is crazy. They, and when I told the kids that where I live, there are no gangs, they started laughing their heads off because they thought I was trying to be funny. Yeah, I didn't believe it at first. They never lived outside of that life. Yeah, Jackson, Mississippi is pretty bad. Um, so you know what I mean? Like, did you just not stand a chance in the sense that it was, did you know there was another way? I, or I think life? that if my mom would have raised me different, yes, but I think my mom had a lot of mental health problems yeah. and addiction problems that... She didn't know how to deal with, and Absolutely. she broke away from the mold that her that her parents had tried to give for her. Mm-hmm. Like my grandparents oh, are saints, and they tried to give her everything, but my mom tossed it away and chose that lifestyle, which mm-hmm. immediately bred, she bred it into me. My mom wanted me to finish high school, never thought college was a possibility, and her highest aspirations for me was to be the biggest dope boy I could be biggest drug dealer that was my reality that's 
what I wanted to understand is when I say you never stood a chance, it's like, I don't mean that in a mean way, but. I know. My wife said the same thing, though. I get it. I've had to go through, um, before my mom died, um, I had to go through counseling for enmeshment problems. And I think what they call it now, like Munchausen or whatever syndrome, whatever. Yes. yes. Where the parent relays all troubles, stress and all that over to the child. And the child thinks it's their fault. Yeah, that's what my mom did to me. So like I like I was going through that before she died. I um it's very abusive. My mom's very abusive, man. Um it sucked. But like towards the end before she died, like she hit me. She uh, we were riding down we were we were actually uh, driving to my grandma's house and um she had a metal brace on. And um she jumped jumped my ass again. She was bipolar and all kinds of other shit, never took medicine. Um uh, the two weeks she did take her medicine, it was heaven. I loved it. I wish she would never stop. But she's like, see, I don't need it. <laughs> and then, like, you know, of course, it always happens. But anyway, um, she hits me. And, and I just look over at her and I said, you know, it must feel good to hit somebody younger than you. She slams on the brakes and tells me to get out. I, okay, get out. I don't know where I'm going, but I can get out. No problem. <laughs> you know, and I get out. And then she's on down the road and realizes she can't get to my grandparents' house without me because they know that I was coming. So that's a whole problem. So she had to come, you know, turn back around and get me. But yeah, that was um, when I started realizing all her issues weren't my issues. Like you kind of realized, wow. Yeah. My mom has issues. Um, it took me a lot of years. Like, Parents do the best they can for what they have, but sometimes yeah. it's not good. I didn't even own a picture of her until this month. She's hurt you. Yeah. She's hurt you. She's like, you know, there's always a little boy inside you that, just wants their mom to love them and be there for them. And when you don't have I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this and um, don't take me the wrong way. I won't. Okay. Um, my mom dying was one of the best days that ever happened to me. One of the best things that ever happened to me. I, I prayed and wished for six months before it happened for it to happen. Maybe I'm, I'm not, was it kind of hanging over your head? Like she, she was a tyrant. Her approval and her her grasp yeah. on you and her. She controlled you a little bit, or yes, she controlled me, beat the shit out of me. If I wanted to go anywhere, she would find reasons to you know ground me, hit me, um, just all kinds of shit. If I would forget to wash the dishes, she would drag me out of bed by my feet at three o'clock in the morning and scream at me and hit me and tell me to wash the dishes, made me do it, and then the next morning beat my ass again because I was tired. You know, bad. So like. Very yeah, I had a rifle one time. And I thought, I, you know, thought about shooting this chick to get out of that because um, Luke Woodham had just done it at the Pearl High School, and I was like, you know, I could do that. That's such a. That's got to be the most awful place to be because everybody loves their mother. You know how to how yeah. bad their mom is. You love your mom, but you also hate her. And yeah. what a what a horrible place to be. Yeah, it's it's a pretty bad dynamic. Um, yeah. 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 There's part of you. It's. I, I, she was only human. She didn't. She didn't have what it took to be able to raise a kid. She didn't. She just shouldn't have. She shouldn't have done that. She, I'm kind of like blown away that you you somehow got, like, out of this. It's unbelievable. 